Good day everyone! Welcome to Transmission Media and Antenna System. I'm Claire Andre R. Cabrera from EK31 under the College of Engineering and Technology at Universidad de Manila. And I'm going to discuss my topic about curtain arrays guided by our Prof. Engineer Brian Dineros. So we have here a brief history about curtain arrays. Curtain arrays were originally developed during the 1920s and 1930s when there was a lot of experimentation with long-distance shortwave broadcasting. The underlying concept was to achieve improvements in gain and directionality over the simple dipole antenna, possibly by folding one or more dipoles into a smaller physical space or to arrange multiple dipoles such that their radiation patterns reinforce each other thus concentrating more signal into a given target area. So, the basic idea of this was to increase the gain or the directionality over a simple dipole antenna either by folding one or more dipoles into a smaller physical space or by arranging multiple dipoles in such a way that their radiation patterns may overlap. So, Guglielmo Marconi, the radio pioneer, commissioned his assistant, Charles Samuel Franklin, to conduct a large-scale analysis into the propagation properties of short wavelengths waves and assess their suitability for long-distance transmissions in the early 1920s. Franklin designed the first curtain array aerial system, also known as Franklin or English system, in 1924. Other early curtain arrays included the Bruce Array, patented by Edmund Bruce in 1927, and the Sturba Curtain, patented by Ernest J. Sturba in 1929. The Bruce Array produces a vertically polarized signal, while Sturba Arrays produce a horizontally polarized signal. Then, the Sturba Curtain, patented by Ernest J. Sturba in 1929 and used by Bell Labs and others throughout the 1930s and 1940s, was the first curtain array to gain prominence. The Sturba Curtain, on the other hand, is a narrow band style that can only be steered mechanically. So now we are done discussing the history of curtain array, we will now proceed to answer the following question. Now, proceed to our next discussion. The curtain array is a shortwave directional antenna device that can concentrate a lot more energy in the forward direction than a rhombic antenna, but it's a lot more expensive to construct. Many foreign shortwave transmitting stations use these high-gain antennas, which can provide very reliable and efficient signals over long distances. What is curtain arrays? The basic idea of this is that curtain arrays are type of large multi-element directional wire radio transmission antennas that are commonly used in the shortwave radio bands. Multiple wire dipole antennas are suspended in a plane in front of curtain reflector made of a flat vertical panel of several long parallel wires. Support wires are strung between pairs of tall steel towers that reach up to 300 feet in height. They are used for long-distance sky wave transmission in which a pulse of radio waves is sent into the sky at a shallow angle and mirror back to earth above the horizon by the ionosphere. Curtain antennas are mostly used by international shortwave radio stations to broadcast to large areas and transcontinental distances. Curtain arrays as properly constructed. Curtain arrays or curtain antennas are a form of broadside radiators. Their name comes from their resemblance to a wire curtain or a vertically hung large flat board. Since broadside radiators use elements aligned in a flat plane at right angles to optimum radiation, the curtain has a flat wide shape. To achieve optimal results, properly designed curtains need a minimum number of components. And to achieve optimal gain for a given physical area, properly designed curtains require a minimum number of elements. Other antennas may be easier to build, but any large array with a properly constructed curtain has the highest gain for a given volume space. Curtains are no much for rhombics and yagis are no much for curtains, unless the curtain is made of tiny yagis. 
The three type system, transmission system are optimized for geopolitical results. Geopolitical necessity leads some international broadcasters to occasionally use three separate antenna arrays, high band and mid band as well as low band HRS curtains. Using three curtain arrays to cover the HF broadcasting spectrum creates a highly optimized HF transmission system. But three or more curtain arrays can be costly to build and maintain, and no new HF relay stations have have been built since the mid-1990s. The modern HRS antenna design has a long lifespan, however, so existing. HRS shortwave transmission system built before 1992 will likely remain available for some time. So now we will proceed to the naming conventions or nomenclatures of curtain arrays. Since 1984, the CCIR has established a standard nomenclature for curtain antennas called CCIR HF transmitting antennas, which consists of one to four letters followed by three numbers. The first letter indicates the orientation of the dipole in the array. The letter H denotes that the dipole are oriented horizontally, resulting in horizontally polarized radio waves being transmitted by the antenna. Next, the letter V denotes that the dipoles are oriented vertically, resulting in the radio waves that are vertically polarized. The second letter indicates whether the antenna has a reflector. The letter R means that one side of an array has a clear passive reflector, allowing the antenna to radiate a single beam. The letter double R denotes that the array has a reversible reflector, which allow the beam path to be shifted 180 degree. Very few of this type have ever been built. RCI Sackville in Canada may have two HRRS types antennas, perhaps the only ones in North America. Since the antenna has no reflector, if R and double R are absent, the dipole array will radiate its energy in two 180-degree perpendicular beams in both directions perpendicular to its plane. Next one is the third letter. Letter S indicates that the array is steerable. The following letters comes three numbers, X, Y, Z. The dimensions of the rectangular array of dipoles are specified by X and Y, while the height above the ground of the array's bottom is specified by Z. The number of collinear dipoles in each horizontal row is an X. The number of vertically arranged dipoles in each column is denoted by Y. The height above ground in wavelengths of the array's lowest row of dipoles is denoted by letter Z. Next is for the notes of HRS nomenclature. HRS antennas of type HRS 11J are undefined as such. Such a thing would consist of just a single dipole. HRS antenna of type HRS 12Z and 21Z exist, but see little practical use in shortwave broadcasting. An antenna with the designation of H12Z is commonly referred to as a lazy H antenna. VHF and UHF repeaters for FM, radio, or television in the UK quite often employ a pair of horizontal dipole, one above the other, to concentrate on transmission power in the vertical plane. Now, let's try to answer this checking comprehension. Next is the HRS antenna. The HRS type antenna is an example of a curtain array antenna. It has horizontal dipoles with a reflector behind them, and the beam is steerable. These antennas are also known as HRRS for a reversible reflector, but the extra R is a seldom use. An HRS type antenna is basically a rectangular array of conventional dipole antennas strung between supporting towers. In the simplest case, each dipole separated from the next by one half lambda vertically, and the centers of each dipole are spaced one lambda apart horizontally. Again, in the simplest case, for a broadside beam, all dipoles are driven in pace with each other and with equal power. Radiation is concentrated broadside to the curtain. A reflector consisting of several parallel wires in the same direction as the dipole will be located behind the array of dipole, usually about one-third lambda away. The curtain would radiate similarly forward and backward if this was not present. 
If the antenna name start with S, it's steerable model. It could be referred to as livable style according to the ITU recommendation. This could be accomplished either electronically by changing the electrical wave bases of the signal felt to the columns of dipole antenna components or physically by mounting the antenna array on a large rotating mechanism. NRK Kivitsoy, for example, are circular railway transports, a pair of wheeled platforms, each of which supports a tower at the opposite ends of a diameter arm. When the towers travel around the circular railway, the current array is suspended between them and rotates with them. Another physical rotation technique is employed by the ALI system when the entire array is built around a central rotatable tower of great strength. Electrically slewed antenna arrays can typically be aimed at a 30-degree angle from the antenna's physical orientation, while mechanically rotated arrays can be rotated 360 degrees. Electrically slewing is usually performed in the horizontal plane, with some vertical modification is possible. The curtain antenna is a dipole array consisting of rows and columns of D. The fundamental structure of HRS antennas works like this. The HRS notation is as follows. HR rows, column, wavelengths above ground. Uh, HR441 means 4 rows, 4 columns, and 1 wavelength above ground. HRS all, the S means is that the antenna pattern is electrically steerable, typically by 15 degree. The number of rows can be 1, 2, 3, 4, or 6 with multiples of up to 12. The number of column is usually 2 or 3 or 4 with multiples up to 8. The curtain antenna is a high gain directional antenna designed for medium and long range communication. The dipoles are horizontally polarized always. A reflector screen is placed behind the dipole array to provide a directive beam. Curtain antennas are generally available in two sizes, HRS curtain antenna variation. A low band array typically covers the 6, 7, 9, and 11 MHz band, larger and taller. A high band array typically covers the 11, 13, 15, 17, and 21 MHz band or 13 to 26 MHz bands, smaller and shorter. Occasionally, an international broadcaster may use for reasons of geopolitical necessity a high band, mid band, as well as low band HRS curtain arrays. Using three HR curtain arrays to cover the HF broadcasting spectrum creates a highly optimized HF transmission system. Next is HF transmission system using three curtain arrays can be costly to build and maintain. Since the 1990s, no new HF transmission system like this has been built. Existing system will likely remain in use with several rebuilds for at least another 50 years. High priority target areas is Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and USA were targeted by this optimized transmission system when duplexing and triplexing were not necessary for real estate reasons. The number of dipole columns defines the azimuth beam width, the mathematical relationship between columns and the directivity. For a two-wide dipole array, the beam width is around 50 degree angle. For a three-wide dipole array, the beam width width is around 40 degree angle for a four wide dipole array the beam width is around 30 degree angle vertical launch angle the number of dipole rows and the height of the lowest element above the ground determine the elevation angle and consequently the distance to the service area a two row high array has a typically take up angle of 20 degrees most commonly used for medium range communication a four-row high array has a typically take-up angle of 10 degrees is most commonly used for long-range communication, while the six-row array is similar to a four-row but can achieve 5 degree to 10 degree take-up angles can be used in a short-wave communication circuits of 12,000 km, km and is highly directional. Now we reach the end of my topic. Let's try to answer these following questions. So here
Here are the summary of my report. Curtain arrays are type of large multi-element directional wired radio transmission antennas that are commonly used in the shortwave radio bands. Multiple wire dipole antennas are suspended in a plane in front of a curtain reflector made of a flat vertical panel of several long parallel wires. Support wires are strung between pairs of tall steel tower that reach up to 300 feet in height. They are used for long-distance sky wave transmission in which a pulse of radio wave is sent into the sky at a shallow angle and mirrored back to earth above the horizon by the ionosphere. Curtain antennas are mostly used by international shortwave radio stations to broadcast to large areas at transcontinental distances. A rectangular array of traditional dipole antennas strung between supporting towers makes up an IHRS-style antenna. In the simplest case, each dipole is one half lambda vertically apart from the next and their centers are one lambda apart horizontally. Both dipoles are guided in pace with each other and with equal power in the simplest case. Radiation is concentrated broadside to the curtain. A reflector consisting of several parallel Parallel wires in the same direction as the dipoles will be located behind the array of dipoles, usually about one-third lambda away. The curtain would radiate similarly forward and backward if this was not present. And that's the end of my topic about the curtain arrays. Thank you for listening.